Mike Tyson wasn't just any ordinary heavyweight champion. The way he did it was something we had never seen. By the time he turned 20, he had already become the youngest heavyweight champion in history, leaving a trail of devastation behind him. From the summer of 1986 to his shocking defeat in Tokyo, Iron Mike Tyson was an unstoppable juggernaut, sending chills down the spines of his opponents. Trying to hold on. Serious trouble. And down he goes. I'm just convinced, you know what I mean? These fellas, how dare them challenge me with their somewhat prim primitive skills. They're just as good as dead. During his peak period, every time he stepped into the ring, it wasn't a question of who would win, but how quickly and brutally it would happen. Tyson's performances weren't just victories, they were statements. Statements that reminded the world what pure skill, unfiltered power and aggression could look like in its most ruthless form. In this video, we're going to take a look back at Mike Tyson's absolute prime when no one could stop him and when he was the baddest man on the planet. And we have a new era in boxing. Oh, that's Mike that's Tyson Tyson. Puts to Tyson that we have to say. To understand how dangerous Mike Tyson became, we have to go back to the summer of 1986, a period in my opinion that marked the beginning of his relentless rise to the top. Coming into June 1986, with an unblemished 21-0 record, Tyson would start the streak that would leave the heavyweight division trembling. Reggie Gross would be that unfortunate man at Madison Square Garden. As he tried to put the pressure on Tyson, it only took Mike one round to turn the tables around, leaving the ref no choice but to finish it. was able to get up a different angle for you again watch the uppercut will land the right hand will land there's the uppercut now the right hand will land not too heavy now watch the left hook bang right there he lands it right on the button and the fight was virtually over here although gross was able to get back up and continue on and this was the closing flurry then ended it now as you look into his eyes it Right there, you can see how glassy eyed he is. Just two weeks later, Tyson was back in action against William Hosea on June 28th. This time, it was even quicker. Tyson finished the fight in under two minutes with a thunderous knockout that left Hosea crumbled on the canvas. So, is this going to follow suit? Mark you, Reggie Gross only lasted one round in his last fight, so maybe not. We shall see. Hosea in the blue, Tyson in the black. We're in Troy, New York. Tyson's 23rd professional fight, 22 unbeaten streak. And Jose, well. No, oh, oh, no, that was just a slip. That was just a slip. Separates them. Good right uppercut. And once again, the legs twitch. Jose are in trouble. And down. The crowd, as you would expect for the local boy, this is upstate New York. Tyson from practically around the corner in the Catskills. Didn't beat it. Well, I thought he did. Hosea thought he did. Harry the ref, quite adamant he didn't. Tyson looking a bit bemused, having his arm raised. There was no stopping Tyson this summer as by the time July hit, 
He stepped in the ring with Lorenzo Boyd this time, showing no signs of fatigue, despite fighting twice in the past month. Boyd tried to answer Tyson by standing his ground more. However, this leaves opportunities for Tyson to set up his uppercuts. Tyson bouncing around, showing a lot more movement than usual. In watching tapes of Mike Tyson, so many times he falls off balance. His feet get mixed up. He starts boxing out of a southpaw position, but he hits so hard that it doesn't matter what position he's hitting you from or what angle. He's just a devastating puncher. To the body with the right hand. That hurt Lorenzo Boyd. Boyd making the mistake of backing up. He's got to come in and throw punches. Boyd, one-time police officer in Stillwater, Oklahoma. See, if Boyd was a boxer, I'd say, okay, box. But he's not a boxer. He's a slugger. Tyson has two of the quickest hands in the heavyweight division. Boyd crowding Tyson and looking for an opening. I know Boyd wants to come in with the uppercut, but hasn't shown it. Tyson shows it there. Belated happy birthday to Mike Tyson. Tyson in at 219. Boy, he carries the weight well. He carries it so well. He says he feels heavier, actually better at this weight than he does when he gets in around 214, 215. Half a minute to go, round one. Crippensville Country Club in Swan Lake, New York. And Lorenzo Boyd has done what 14 others have failed to do against Mike Tyson. Let's go into the second round. Caton, excuse me. Dropped an L in there where it didn't belong. Body shots, very effective for Tyson thus far. And when he was on the police force, in Stillwater, Oklahoma. The guys in the department kind of urged him on to become a fighter, and then uh, he's gone full-time. He's also taking criminal law courses at Oklahoma State. Right now, he backs off from a sharp right uppercut to the body by Tyson. Again, a double right hand to the body and the chin. Down goes Lorenzo Boy. The Shoot. count is five. The count is six. The count is eight. He will not get up. It's over. Sam. Show me what heavyweight throws punches that quick. Those were two right hands, one to the body. Just 15 days later, on July 26th, Tyson faced Marvis Fraser. The fight carried a deeper significance because Marvis was the son of the legendary Joe Fraser, one of the most iconic heavyweights to ever step in the ring. While he had a very strong amateur career and many expected Marvis to potentially follow in his father's footsteps, it was Tyson who seemed to embody that spirit of smoking Joe that night. In a twist of irony, it was Tyson who had channeled that relentless all-out aggression that Joe Frazier was known for. Except Tyson did it with more speed and ferocity, showing the world that he was here not just to win, but to dominate. Scoring is done by three judges. The referee does not score. Scoring on the round system, supplemental four-point uh, scoring system if the rounds wind up even. And the three knockdown rule is in effect. Tyson comes out slugging. He comes out smoking like Marvis's father, Joe. Marvis must move or we're going to be out of here very, very quickly. Uppercut and Marvis is hurt. Fraser is down. Joe Cortez moves in to have a look. And he's going to stop the fight. It did not last 20 seconds. Tyson goes over to take a look at Marvis Frazier, obviously quite concerned. A terrific uppercut. Second knockout sensation. Watch the right hand of Mike Tyson. Marvis in the corner and trapped. There it was. Just clipped him right on the chin. The left was unnecessary. Marvis is badly hurt at this point. Uppercut again. And there, Marvis is out on his feet. Everything after this is just incidental. Any skepticism about his punching power has to evaporate. That night, Marvis Fraser stood in the ring as a connection to boxing's great past, but Tyson made it clear that a new era had begun, and he was going to lead it. Tyson's momentum continued to build as he entered the end of the summer, facing Jose Ribalta, 6'5 giant, and the tallest opponent Tyson had faced up to that point, and definitely presented a new challenge for the young heavyweight, something Mike clearly needed to develop. 
despite the reach advantage he had over Tyson, he was still able to knock him down multiple times throughout the fight before eventually getting a TKO victory in the 10th round. And the battle of stairs was a draw. Now what happens remains to be seen. Pat Putnam of Sports Illustrated probably put it best. Tyson has the anticipation of a Doberman who's happened upon 210 pounds of unguarded meat. From wearing down on a tall man like the ball. He's throwing his jab, and at times it lands, but you notice the way that it comes back. It comes back slow, and it drops. So right, counter right hand by Mike Tyson is invited. And there was an uppercut. What a shot. It really did. Walter trying to bang with Tyson and gets off the ropes. Tyson's body punches are absolutely devastating. And the opponent seeing the punch, and those are the punches that do the most damage. There it is. Never saw it coming. We will remind you that little right hand partially oh, no. caught in the gloves. Watch your head. Is that vaunted punching power of Mike Tyson going to be able to take out the big, tough heavyweight so he hasn't fought yet? Because he's fighting the right way. Wait, right, 10 rounds with Quick Tillis. There was a big right hand, and that hurt the ball down. There's Tyson at work on the ropes, and there's that big right hand. But Rebolta came right back. straight up too bad. There is no spring. And there's a smashing left hand. And wisely, Tony Battle. As Rebalta's arms were locked in the ropes. And Tyson has not finished his man off. Rebalta is still there. I don't know if this fight makes Rebalta a star in Miami, but... He's earned some respect. Oh, what a shot! And Rebalta is down. He is up, but he is in some Okay. Oh, oh. So if you want to continue, he said, yeah, hell yeah. That's a fighter. Let's take another look, Ray, at the end of it all. Big left hand there. That put Rivalta down. Three rounds. Here, Tyson with that aggressive style and working the left hook. He was able to hurt Rivalta a number of times, but Rivalta maintained his composure. By the time he'd entered the fall, another opponent was lined out in Ratliff, who also had a solid reputation as a former cruiserweight champion and was much taller than Mike again. However, his tactics were to go on his bike while Mike wanted to finish this one much quicker. Reach or try to exchange punch for punch with Mike Tyson. His best bet is use that jab. Here Radliff is actually running. He's not actually boxing and moving and utilizing the ring. As Radliff is doing here. Now so far it's tracked me. There was a right hand by Tyson. And that stopped Radliff. Give Mike Tyson momentum. You have some problems. A left and a right behind it. No knockdown, says Davy Pearl. That was a slip. All right, Mike. And Ratliff continues on the bike. Hold it up, hold it up. Don't punch it. Hold it up. Ratliff is fighting his first round, Ray, like a startled fawn. It's like a, he's still trying to survive, Barry. Going to be on a 10 speed or a 12 speed in this round. On his trunks, it says Spartan, and I think that was an apt description of his performance in the first round. Relax. 
like so. That was a good opportunity there. On November 22nd, 1986, Tyson faced Trevor Burbick for the WBC heavyweight title. If he was to win, he would become the youngest heavyweight world champion we've ever seen. Burbick, a tough, experienced champion, was expected to pose a significant challenge. Going off the summer Tyson had just had, it's no wonder so many were favouring him to get the job done, to become the new king of the heavyweight division and mark the beginning of his reign of dominance. It seems as if this was how it was meant to be. Customato knew that the day Mike Tyson entered the ring to fight for the title, he would be by himself. I succeed when I make that fellow become champion world and independent of me. Because when he's independent of me, I have succeeded. He has succeeded when he becomes champion. I have succeeded when I made him independent of me. He doesn't need me anymore. The prophet had a way with words, but you have to wonder what he would be saying to Mike on this night the culmination of a dream. If Plus was around, and I was fighting for the title, he would tell me things, and he would describe the way Burbick would fight, because I'm sure if he was around, he would have watched Burbick coming out of his ears, and he would describe the way Burbick fight and explain this is what I would do, and so I would tell him, yes, but just don't worry about it, because everything's going to be all right, and he knew not to worry about it, no matter what happened. The job has to be done. The key in this fight for Tyson is to be patiently aggressive, not to fling himself into clinches as he has done. The key for Burbick, in my judgment, is to hold him off, and smother Tyson, and hope for a long fight that wears him out. Burbick says it's imperative. He keeps his man in the middle of the ring. He says Tyson will not push me back like he's pushed other fighters back and I'll push him back, and I think therein is another key to this fight, Ray. If Burbick can push Tyson back, easier said than done, but if he can, then he can be in the hunt. Well, what is up to is imperative for both fighters. Keep those hands hot. Shoulders. That was a big right hand by Tyson. how to uh, get a breathing, get that second wing going. Another big left hook by Tyson. I mentioned this earlier, but Tyson's, Tyson's punches even sound different than most heavyweights. Making him fight his fight. Another good left hand by Tyson. And a right behind it, and Burbick is rocked. Burbick in trouble here. Just trying to get through the round. He's hurt, no question. That was a big, big round for Mike Tyson. For Tyson. And the punches are short because he's coming forward and harder to see. We have to remember that Trevor Burbick has never been hit by punches as hard as he's being hit in this fight. And you'd never know how a man is going to respond to that. People could have hoped for in that round. Trevor Burbick, I should point out, has been down twice. There's another big shot by Tyson. Burbick in a heap of trouble. Down he goes. The punches are coming. 
Herman is such a sensation that uh, Weber can't deal with them. They're short, powerful, devastating punches. demonstrate his talent. Here the right hand that put Trevor Burbick in a great deal of trouble, and here's the first knockdown. Again, another looping right hand, and Tyson punches very well with both hands. That, it was a good display of punching power by Mike Tyson. And again, just to underscore the theme that Larry Merchant said, well, the final knockdown, we didn't see that beautiful uppercut too often. In fact, Tyson didn't need it. But it was a short left hook that did away with Trevor Burbick. Just tremendous shots and very quick hand speed. He set up the last knockdown with a shot to the body and came right back behind it. And you can see at this point that Trevor Burbick was not about to get back up. To understand the punch of power of Mike Tyson, all you have to do is watch this replay. And Trevor Burbick has a very durable chin. He has never been hit that hard that often by any fighter. With that right hand. It's such a short left uppercut, left, left hook, I'm sorry. And uh, it was a one-punch knockout, pretty much. It was not accumulation of punches. Tyson, 20 years old, a heavyweight champion. How does it feel to be wearing this belt? Well, it's the moment I waited for all my life since I started the game of boxing. And as everyone said, um, that Burbick, Burbick didn't have a chance. Burbick was a very tough, very strong, in fact, very, very strong. I was never expecting him to be as strong like that. I knew he was strong, but I didn't expect him to be as strong as me. And he was very strong. But I was, I was calm, and I was timing my punch. Every punch I do, I do a bad intention in a vital area. Everybody thought that the, the magnitude of this event, your youth, the fact that you have been a little too impatient in past fights, might make this a longer fight. How did you feel coming into this fight? How are you prepared to fight him? Well, I told everybody um, I, I anticipated on a knockout because I was so calm, so relaxed, and I had so much belief in myself. But my trainer, Kevin Rooney, and I, I want to get in here. We sacrificed so much and we put in so much, and I just knew we couldn't fail. And he was starting to hold on and just survive even as early as that. Well, I don't know about that. If that was so, that was his problem. I was coming to destroy and win the heavyweight championship of the world, which I'd done. And I'd like to dedicate my fight to my great guardian, Customato. And I'm, I'm sure he's up there and he's looking and he's talking to all the great fighters and saying his boy did it. He's smiling, that's right. Customato, <laughs> when he first saw you at the age of 13, 14, he said to you, Stay with me and you can be the heavyweight champion of the world. Yes. And you said, how do you know that? You just That's saw me. I said. I said, this is a crazy old white dude. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think he saw in you? I couldn't tell you. I couldn't tell you. He's a genius. You can't, everything he said happened. Isn't it true? Everything he said happened with me. As we entered 1987, this was going to be a huge year for Tyson. As he set his sights on unifying the heavyweight division, on March 7th, he faced James Bonecrusher Smith in a highly anticipated unification bout for the WBA title. Unlike Tyson's previous fights, they were marked by quick, brutal finishes. Smith, standing at 6'4", proved to Tyson that he was going to be a much tougher opponent. This was a bit of a messy fight compared to his last ones, with Smith slowing the pace of the fight, stopping Mike from getting his signature combinations off. And while it may have not been the most exciting performance, he showed he was still capable of getting the job done. Thank you. 
combination. There was the right hand. <laughs> Speaking of theater, laid back, Tyson up. That was the best punch of the fight. We thought we would see that in the first 10 seconds, not in the last 10 seconds. And it is over. It was it was too late, it was too little for Bone Crusher Smith. Where was that an hour ago? Let's get the official verdict now from Chuck Hall. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the decision of the judges. Judge Lou Tabbitt scores 120, 106, 119, 107 for the new WBA WBC heavyweight champion of the world, Iron Mike Tyson. As Mike continued his journey to become undisputed, he would face Thomas at the end of the spring. He was another big man, skilled and experienced, known for his jab. Tyson's creativity really showed in this, as he threw together a 15-punch combination, flooring Thomas and forcing a stoppage, bringing him one step closer to become undisputed. Oh, a certain performance. And a left hand and that staggered Thomas. And a right hand behind it. Thomas in trouble again. And now Tyson moves in for the kill. Two uppercuts and a left hand. Thomas trying to hold on. Serious trouble, and down he goes. Now let's take a look at the knockdown. You know, we talk about finishers, and I've always said you were a great finisher. Well, here's a guy who doesn't have to take a back seat. Well, he levels his punches. I mean, he gets so much uh, leverage behind each punch. Mike Tyson can fight southpaw. He can fight uh, orthodox. He puts his hip behind. Look at here. He's just putting his entire body behind the punch, and it's, he's so relentless. Again, the uppercut, left hook. He's still in position to throw more punches, and it's just a matter of time. That left hook there was deadly. Just a great finisher. I mean, once this man is hurt, he is gone. Well, what, what Mike Tyson is such a threat to the heavyweight division is because he is such a good finisher. He gets you hurt. He doesn't let, let, uh, let you off the hook. Well, Kevin Rooney is trainer, and we always talk. Tyson takes the final step toward the undisputed title. And now Tyson moves in for the kill. Two uppercuts in the left hand. Thomas trying to hold on. Serious trouble. And down he goes. Finally, we've seen the opportunists. Tony Tucker after a come from behind TKO of Buster Douglas has emerged as the IBF heavyweight champion. There was left hook there. And a right behind him and another right. Douglas is in deep trouble on the ropes. Almost halfway through the round. On August 1st, 1987, Tyson faced Tony Tucker in the high stakes fight to become undisputed heavyweight champion to capture the IBF title. Tucker, who was also undefeated at the time, had been very confident in getting an upset. Iron Mike did struggle with his sharp counters early in the fight. However, Tyson's pressure and bodywork wore Tucker down throughout the 12 rounds. He walked the walk. It's time for Tony Tucker now to walk the walk. Or run the run, as it were. And we'll see what kind of tactic Tucker takes. I was expecting Mike Tyson to jump right on Tony Tucker. Tucker, I had figured that he should at least tie his man up, try to frustrate Mike Tyson. But is he strong enough to do that? Well, that was a good right hand by Tucker. That might have been the best shot that Mike Tyson has ever taken right there. Did you know that uppercut blocked Mike Tyson? This man, Tucker, may have found out a weakness. And another right hand by Tucker. Tucker seems willing to brawl with Mike Tyson early. Good body shot by Tyson. That's exactly what Kevin Rooney was telling him to do in the corner. Now see, tie this man up and get out of the corner. There was a good right hand again by Tucker. In close, catching Tyson on the way in. He's finished with the left hook there. You see the intensity in, in uh, Tony Tucker. There was a big left hand by Tyson. And that was the one big punch. And another one. He 
see, this is what Tyson wanted. He wanted uh, Tucker to stand there and exchange punch for punch. In this case, normally, Tyson comes out on top. Did they think this fight is winnable? Time, Did time, you see that? Time, 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 now, that was an interesting time. scenario. Tucker was trying to get his handlers and seconds out of the ring. The bell had rung. They were so excited about the prospect of possibly winning the fight, they forgot to put his mouthpiece in. Tyson looks right now like he's in it for the long haul here. And there was a big right hand. Tucker says, no, no, I'm not hurt. I've always found that to mean I'm hurt. And he took another right hand, got cute, and paid the price. I think he's watched my fight before. Yeah, I think he has too. I think his timing is not as good as yours. Again, Tucker trying to get cute and again getting the worst of it. Still mugging with Tyson, which brings the crowd alive. Well, when you do that, and I know from experience because I invented it, you got to be very careful because you always, you're so, so, you're so vulnerable for a counterpunch. Tyson getting off quicker with his jab now. A good, short, strong, fast left jab of Mike Tyson. Tucker's fighting a great fight. But he said, so what with these so-called experts? I'm going to show you. And this is what he did tonight. And he has. Even if he loses the fight, he's probably made more friends than he has in the 34 wins that he's had. It's over. Well... Tony Tucker talked the talk and walked the walk. Tyson's aggression and control earned him the unanimous decision in this victory, unifying and becoming the undisputed champion at just 21 years old, which is unreal when you actually think about it. Not as happy as one would think he would be for being the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world, right? Because, you know, as long as you make mistakes, I tell you, you have no means to be happy. I'm a perfectionist. I want to be perfect. And I was trying to use my jab more. And I was just a little confused because he was holding a lot, but I was, I stopped being frustrated and I just continued jabbing most of the round. Thank you, Larry. Undisputed champion, 21 years old. Do you feel now that you're the undisputed champion? That that really is more meaningful than the other championships in terms of history. I knew I would heavyweight, longest heavyweight champion when I beat Burger. Thank you very much. Okay, Mike. Thank you. It was now time for Tyson to defend his unified titles and his next challenge would be against former Olympic gold medalist Tyrell Briggs from the famous 1984 Olympic team. And as good as I am, I know that I, I know how good I am. And for me to have been criticized and the whole shot, I mean, you know, I owe it to myself to go out there and beat Michael Tyson like I am his dad. It's, he's made for me, Ty's son. I, I owe it to myself to go out there and beat this fellow and be called the new undisputed heavyweight champion in the world. Take some risks. You know, he quotes Joe Frazier, actually, as he comes into the ring when people criticize his height, that he's too small, and he says Frazier believed he was big enough to get the job done, and that's all that counts. His 31 unblemished victories are by knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, the undefeated, undisputed, heavyweight champion of the world, that school but you just don't know expect Tyson to jump right on Tyrell Biggs three questions that Mike Tyson really has to answer can he cope with a clever boxer can he survive a heavy puncher and can he persevere when he's hurt you notice right from the start Tyson is applying the pressure trying to slow his man down I'm seeing more jazz from Mike Tyson than I've seen in the past I see a lot of movement on the part of uh, Tyrell Biggs the lateral movement by Tyson. Teofilo Stevenson, and I admit it was five years ago, but he really bothered There is the hook, again, because his hands are down. He's moving right, but he keeps his hands down too low. Tyson has very quick hands on the big man. He's starting to stand there and exchange toe-to-toe, -to -toe, like I said earlier. He can't do that. Tyson's punches come so fast with so much velocity behind him. And the way that Biggs is moving to his right, and the right hand does the most damage. 
There was a big right hand, best punch of the fight. That was the left hook, Barry. That was the left hook I was talking about. Now, here is Tyson's most effective punch. Biggs has been on his uh, flat-footed more in this round than he was in the first round. Got nailed with the left hook. He has shown in the past that he takes a good punch. That offsets someone else's jab. Another left hook. The hook's gonna land all night, Barrett, because his right hand is down. Body shot with the left hand. I break it. Something he pointed out before the fight. And now it's Tyson just hammering it. from uh, Tyrell Biggs now. Start those some uppercuts. He took a big left hand there. And another one. Right, no the corner and look long and hard at that cut in the last round and you're gonna see him again. Tyson hit on a break now. Can I say break, you go break, understood? You understand Mike, Joe? Let's go. Five. That cut looks even uglier. I'm Friday, sure the look at bloody it. Friday. Friday. Me that Biggs is pretty much falling into the same trap as Mike Tyson, trying for one punch. And he's never, there's a right hand that just caught Biggs off balance. He's telling Tyson, get a, little, a couple head fights. He is gone right now. He has no legs at all. And 10 seconds to go in a round. There's a left hand. He's down again. It's over. It's all over. And it wasn't even close. And what we've seen on that, it was a left hand and a big one, and I feel like I'm being redundant with that, but he hit him with many big left hands, Ray. Well, look at look at the right hand of um, Tyrell Biggs. It's down, and the left hook's been landed from round one. But the first, the first minute or two of round one, Biggs doing his job, boxing. Now he becomes stationary target. That total -to toe tactics proved wrong as David Bay. Briggs tried to use his height and jab to keep Tyson at bay in this one, but Tyson's aggression and leaping hooks would catch Tyrell by surprise many times. By the seventh round, Tyson's body shots and hooks simply overwhelmed Briggs for the finish. This fight almost showed that no amount of skill or pedigree could withstand Tyson's ferocity. Tell me, what, what did you think in that first round when he was moving, trying to do an Ali no, with his left? I knew when I, when I came in this fight, I was the best fighter in the world, and I man alive that can beat me. What broke him down? Was it just Constantly the body punches. When I was, I was hitting him with body punches, I heard him, actually, he was crying in there, making women gestures like, oh, 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 I can't How, find you, him, but I knew that he was breaking down soon. You're saying that Biggs was crying when yes, you hit him? Yes. When, when did that happen? And perhaps the fourth round on. So that you knew you had him by that Absolutely, time. Absolutely, but I knew he was, he was toughing it, taking those punches. Was this your most satisfying fight in the sense of the way you went about it patiently and, and business-like, not getting excited, not trying to take him out with one punch? Well, I, I was very calm, and I, was, and I was thinking about Roberto Duran, how he used to cut down the runners and just wear them down, and I had that frame of mind when I was in the ring. Mike would then fight again in 1988, this time against the legendary Larry Holmes, with the Eastern Assassin coming out of retirement for this fight, hoping to reclaim that past glory. But maybe Tyson gave him a good reason why he should have stayed retired, as Mike was able to get past that whipping jab Larry Holmes was so well known for, with powerful combinations. Maybe Muhammad Ali gave him the motivation before the fight to go for the finish. This was definitely a symbolic win for Tyson, as he defeated a former champion who had once dominated the division that he was now king of. Mike up at his toes, tries to get the footwork going. Trying to pick up the pace. Butler with a pretty good left hook. That's the best punch landed so far. Because if Larry continues to fight like this, he can't survive long. 
The things that made him great are not there. The foot speed or the hand speed. Another crushing blow to the body of Larry Holmes. Closing seconds of the first round. As the bell, ending round one. It's always exciting to watch the former great against the present great. The only thing is, this is beginning to remind me of the night that Larry Holmes beat up Muhammad Ali. For some of you old timers, you might remember Rocky Marciano knocking out Joe Lewis. It's that kind of night. I just hope Larry doesn't get hurt. Then he goes back to settling down, back on his heels. Mike moves the body, moves the head side to side. He's up on his toes. And when Mike gets up on his toes and moves side to side, he's at his best. But right now, with the inability of Larry Holmes to land the jab or even use it much, Mike comes right through. That's one of the best combinations that Larry's thrown, and it doesn't shift Mike at all. It doesn't even back him off. Agent heavyweight, looking for another payday. Looping right hand gets through and shifts Larry back. Larry tries to work the uppercut inside. Nice defense inside by Larry. He's got those big, long arms. The Atlantic City Convention Center. You're watching Larry Holmes. Oh, look at this! Larry up on his toes, using the jab. Swinging that left hand in front of him. Shades of Holmes of old. Well, for you youngsters, you saw just a shade of the old Larry Holmes. And now here he is back to the... Oh, left hook got Larry that time. That never would have happened in the old days. In the 1988, it's Mike Tyson's here of the 80s. Right now, getting through this fourth round is the biggest problem. Oh, right hand, down goes Larry Holmes. For one of the few times in his career. Boy, oh boy, look at that. Ronaldo Snipes had him out with the heaviest shot than that. But right now, Mike Tyson is in charge. He's the boss, and Larry's down for the second time. There's no free knockdown rule, but Larry's in a heap of trouble here. His leg's out there, he'll take the standing eight counts the blood. He senses the kill. He comes in for it. Larry trying to hold him off. There's too much time left in the fourth round. The end of a great career is imminent. Larry Holmes' his legs are jelly. There's lightning in the fist. Big right hand followed up by the left foot. Lightning in the fist of Tyson. Getting in position. Mike showing patience to get set for the big shot. Right hand hurt Larry again. He's back at his heels. Left hand. Larry's going to get hurt. This is bad. Takes a look into the eyes. Larry gets nailed with the left hand. The right hand digs to the body. Goes to draw right hand. Gets clipped with a big right hand. He won't get up from this one. It's all over. Joe Cortez has seen enough. And Larry Holmes is knocked out. He doesn't count him out, but he's out. And above that left eye. Same thing, different angle, watch for it. Bates, boom, right there, look at that. The power of that right hand. And Mike driving off his back foot and really has everything going. Watch the way, see, watch the way, see? He's almost jogging into it. He's got everything going for him when he lands that right hand. He's gone by, Larry would have had the left up. It's the second knockdown now. Let's see how this occurs. A left hand, a right hand, and then just an accumulation of pretty good shots there. This isn't as tough a knockdown as the first one. Same thing. So he misses that shot. Catches him good there below the jaw. But he's already rattling his brain. He's out of his leg right here. And then on top of the head, which rattles the brain again. Because he's never been hurt like this before. Oh, that is a tough, tough punch. And the left hook digs to the body. He's out of his feet right here. Goes to throw it, and it's caught, and it exposes his body. And then look right there. Boom! His head going one way, Mike's fist coming the other way, and this is the very last time. This will show exactly how that right hand gets hung up in the ropes. And watch the way he spins his body. And right there, he's caught, exposed, and Mike, boom, he jumps on it. And that's all she wrote. Mike Tyson retains the heavyweight championship of the world. Ladies and gentlemen, here's time. The end comes at 2 minutes 55 seconds of the fourth round. The winner, and still the undisputed, undefeated heavyweight champion of the world, Iron Mike Tyson. Busy period of time for Mike Tyson, who got married on February 7th, and then very shortly after that departed the United States and came here to Tokyo. 
to fulfill a promise he made to the Japanese people back in 1986. When I become the heavyweight champ, I would love to come to Japan and defend my title. And I, I look forward very much to being there and meeting all the great people in Japan. Tyson then would take an interesting move by taking on Tony Tubbs in Tokyo, Japan. Tubbs attempted to frustrate Tyson with his movement and jabs. Tyson's aggressive style quickly overwhelmed him. In the second round, Tyson caught Tubbs with a devastating left hook to the head, leading to a TKO victory. And you can begin to see the startling hand quickness that Tubbs brings, startling partially because of the shape of his body. Well, here with Tubbs, the uppercut. I also know the uppercut of Mike Tyson. Tyson missed with the left hook. Earlier, he had landed a wicked right to the killer kidney. Look for a looping right hand by Mike Tyson. Mike, because what's happened, Tyson started to set up. You need to break that rhythm with a jab. Tubbs throwing the uppercut. A lot of people think he will have to be effective with that punch because Tyson comes in constantly. Well, Tyson also lunged him with an overhand right there. That right hand up because of the left hook of Mike Tyson. But also, you notice now you see a much more relaxed Tony Tubbs. So now his punches are being more fluent. Get range so he can drop his right hand because in this corner they told him to drop the right hand. The left hook lands, but he needs to come back with the right hand. The body shot and then the uppercut. Raises his chin up and then the left hook comes into play. Good uppercut by Tubbs inside. Snap Tyson back a little. Since Fury, as have so many of his opponents. Good left hook, good, good combination by Tubbs. Open up. Punches with Tyson. Good body shot, but three combinations now. 30 seconds left in the round. Both fighters have had their say here. I couldn't tell whether another punch hurt. Tubbs is hurt. Tubbs is hurt badly. It was a left hook. Fans are enjoying. They show their appreciation here. Damage. Well, Tyson now starting to find his range. The left hook there. Pretty much did, spoke for itself. It's self-explanatory because it was a short and powerful left hook that put Tony Tubbs down. And here Mike still showing that he is a good finisher. What was happening actually was that Tyson was wearing down Tubbs because Tubbs tried to stay inside and fight Mike Tyson's fight, which I thought was a mistake. Once again, that's short left hook. And uh, for those who say Mike is not really one punch knocker outer, I think they need to look at some films again. In the summer of 1988, Mike would finally get his chance against Michael Spinks, a fight that had been talked about for years. Spinks, the lineal heavyweight champion, while also being a former undisputed light heavyweight champion, was very much seen as the last tick of the box to gather all the necessary titles. Many thought Spinks could actually cause an upset, however it couldn't have been any further from this, as it only lasted 91 seconds. Good evening, gentlemen. You were both given your instructions in the dressing room. Are there any questions by either of you? All right, both of you touch gloves. Good luck to both of you. I do think that this fight will be decided by two things. How Michael Spinks can deal with the extreme pressure that Tyson puts on a fighter. This is they normally have been in the past. Now watch Tyson jump right into his chest. Michael Spinks, give him a little movement. Keep those hands high. Very, very high. Stepping in. Already warning Mike about the elbows. Various opponents have complained that Tyson rocks them with elbows along the ropes in close. You see the tactics uh, used by Michael Spinks now. He's throwing his jab, but he has to keep those hands extremely high. Watch for the uppercuts too. Again. Tyson not afraid, as we expected, and Spinks ready to mix it up with him. Tyson along the ropes doing damage. Michael Spinks has to keep moving because every shot... Oh, Uppercut that's... landed inside and Spinks went down. And that is the first time Michael Spinks has ever been down in a professional fight. And he's down again and in serious trouble. A right hand right on the chin. 
He's not going to make it. It's all over. Michael Spink started out pretty slow, and here we see Tyson, as usual, going to the body. A great uppercut that sent Mike, Michael Spink to the canvas. That was the second knockdown and the finishing blow. Watch again. This is after Spinks got up after one knockout, tried to fight back, and had nothing as Mike Tyson landed the right, the short right, to the jaw. This fight may have marked the pinnacle of Tyson's career. An emphatic first round knockout over the undefeated Spinks solidified his status as the lineal and now undisputed heavyweight king. However, behind the scenes, things were about to get very messy for Tyson, and you could argue this was the start of the decline. It was his last fight under the watchful eye of Kevin Rooney, who had been an integral part in perfecting Tyson's peekaboo style and discipline, continuing the work Gus D'Amato had done. But the turning point really came on the death of his manager Jim Jacobs in 1988. Who had been a close mentor to Tyson, alongside his other manager Bill Caton. They'd helped him become the youngest heavyweight champion in history. However, Jacobs had put a clause in Tyson's contract, guaranteeing his wife a percentage of Tyson's future earnings. This simply started the distrust between Tyson and the Catskills team, including Caton and Rooney. In the end, Tyson, influenced by Don King, distanced himself by Caton and eventually fired Rooney, cutting all ties with the people who had built the foundation of his career. Nevertheless, there was still that fire within Tyson to perform at his best. Actress Robin Givens says she wants out of their eight-month marriage and she has hired celebrity divorce lawyer Marvin Mitchison to make it happen. his brief boxing career. The only constant for Mike Tyson has been change. He has lived in a state of perpetual motion as turbulent business and personal affairs have revolved around him. All of us have witnessed the events. Who among us can measure the change? I feel very confident. I've got the power, the timing. The, the time is right to beat him. It's peak time. Tyson's next fight came against Frank Bruno, who came across the pond from the UK. Bruno, known for his power, actually managed to stun Tyson early before Tyson regained control and if you haven't guessed already, went for the finish. Got the better of his older opponent. And Tyson starts with a fury and Bruno tries to punch back. Bruno down after a right hand. It is scored as a knockdown. The bout. Fastest knockout in heavyweight history, 55 seconds. I kind of figured this would be somewhat of a street fight. It's not really boxing right here. Mike Tyson is traditionally doing what he does in the, in the past. He's done the past, rather. Go inside. Bruno's trying to make him respect him. A lot of rabbit shots thrown. Solid left and a right by Tyson. And now Bruno rabbit punches Mike as he takes him to the ropes. And again, it's a smart tactic by Frank Bruno. You know what's happening because Mike hasn't fought in a while. Tyson finally went to the body in that last exchange. Now Bruno lands a short left inside. And Tyson wobbles for a second. There's that puncher's chance I had talked about. And now another left hand from Bruno. Does Tyson. One man down, the other man wobbled. I'll take it. Down. And here is Bruno coming back with that right hand and then the left. And there was a left that wobbled Tyson. They affected with it. Right hand by Tyson landed flush on the jaw. Bruno in trouble again. Here's Tyson with that straight right hand. Very good, straight, classic right hand. Good hand. Good body shots, baby. You gotta use a lot of them seven. 
Not a standard. It is Aaron Snowell who does most of the talking to the fighter. Tyson now is told to use the jab as opposed to just walking in. And he's doing just that. He's not going to have to for too long if he lands another right hand like the one he just landed moments ago. Mike jumps in with the left hook. Earlier in his career, Tyson had a tendency to be lazy in clinches. And use the jab as opposed to just going in with his head. And come straight up the middle and use the uppercut like that. He's been effective when he comes straight up the middle instead of winging shots from side to side. invitation solid left hook inside and an uppercut with the right and Bruno has wobbled again come on, come on. uppercut uppercut right hand Bruno's in serious trouble a left hook Bruno up at this moment. There's blood trickling from his nose and his mouth. Trying to land the one haymaker. Oh, oh, he's, it's just a matter of This is here. vicious punishment. That's that shot. That's that, 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 that bolo shot. And Beautiful Richard shot. Steele has seen enough. As Terry Lawless throws in the towel simultaneously. That was that shot, Jim. That double shot with the same hand. And what you saw there, as I said earlier in the round, is a, a mark of the progress of Mike Tyson. There was a moment there where Tyson got inside and smashed an elbow into Bruno's mouth to make punching. There's the uppercut. Those right. are the short uppercuts that do so much damage, and uh, people just don't appreciate those little short shots. Now, what's these shots with the same hand? Again, the left hook has been doing a great deal of uh, damage to Frank Bruno in the earlier rounds. A lot of them missed, but the punch that did get through, Jim, were able to slow down Frank Bruno. That shot there, the uppercut, beautiful combination. Ultimately decided he had seen enough, and at this moment, Terry Lawless, the manager of Frank Bruno, was running along the ring apron with a towel in hand, asking Steele to stop it. It's a double punch with the same hand, to the body, to the chin. Here it is, to the midsection, right up the middle. Beautiful shot. But did he, did that left hand shake you momentarily that he hit you within that round? He was throwing a great deal of hard punches, but I refused to go down. They didn't even phase me. All right. Memories of, of Bone Crusher Smith passed through my mind. A guy who hugged you for 12 rounds. Well, no, I knew he wasn't, he wasn't about to hug him for 12 rounds because he was trying to impress his Englishmen out here. And I'm just convinced, you know what I mean? These fellas, I dared them challenge me with their somewhat prim primitive skills. They're just as good as dead. Join you. In the summer of 1989, Tyson was at the peak of his power, but maybe not taking his opponents as seriously as he should have. It was now Carl the Truth Williams, who was known for his sharp jab and quick hands, and was seen as a potential threat. However, Tyson wasted no time in this fight. I remember that they boxed two or three times in the gymnasium when Tyson was coming up. But uh, as Jim Watt and Frank Bruno both agree, there was very little relevance in that. I think I would feel the safer for him if we would back off and have a look at Tyson first of all. This is a completely different Tyson from the last one he shared the ring with. Well, the, the, the first change I've noticed in Tyson, he normally comes into the ring soaking in sweat. He hasn't done that tonight. I wonder if that's a change of plan. With oh, what a left hook. Well, it certainly wasn't cold, Jim. In fact, it looks like Carl Williams has been knocked cold in the first round. Is he going to count him out or let him go on? He's done well to get up. No, he stopped it. Well, it was a beautiful punch, bang on the chin. Now, you can see the way he goes down, first of all, loses all control. Then you can see the actual time it took to get back up onto his feet again. Yeah, there it is. There. He's got the left hand that he was talking about, but the way he slips inside is he, he's such a better, good defensive fighter, Tyson. They, people forget that. They just think he's a, a ring animal. He's got a lot of ability to go with that. So Once that, more. That punch, too, it couldn't have landed in a better spot, and he got the full turn of the shoulders, the hips, bang onto the chin. That was a beautiful punch, and the way he went down, you could see there was no way he could throw the effect Finally, of that. on February 11th, 1990, Tyson faced James Buster Douglas in what was expected to be another routine defence. 
However, Douglas defied all the odds, withstanding Tyson's early attacks and using his jab to control the fight. He was even knocked down at one point by Tyson. Controversially, this maybe should have been called a count out. Douglas, though, produced one of the most shocking upsets we've ever seen. But it's not that they're not into the fight, it's just that they don't seem to react the same way they do. You know, you an idea. The stage is set. We're set to go. Bob Sheridan here. You see Mike Tyson in the black truck. Larry Rosadio of the United States, Ken Morita of the U.S., and Mr. Uchia falls a bit early to get through the first round, and that's why Don King has brought the show on the road. Look at Buster landing some shots here. Helping Mike. Mike comes through, leans to the right, and then throws that left hook. Mark Octavio Miran. Oh, an uppercut got through that time by Buster. Look at that here. Well, one thing for sure, he's come to fight. And Buster Douglas has landed over 50 punches, and Tyson's landed only 16. In the second round in favor of Buster Douglas. See Mike much more aggressive, but again, Buster's... Octavio Miran, the third man in the ring. Can he keep that left going? Well, there's a right hand that gets broke. I'm talking about the big question. Wow. That's the great thing about the heavyweights. It's always sudden death. For Styles, big uh, fights. And you see, oh, there's Mike missing that big left. And just raised to Douglas. And Douglas answered with loaded up shots of his own as the bell in. Round four. Hey, we've got a good fight on our hands. Go. Evander, one of the great warriors in the sport, but he'll have his hands full with Tyson like everyone else has had. Everything will be there, Tyson. Everything will be there, Tyson. Wants to drag this uh, into some later rounds. There was a real good right hand that landed off the hand. Oh, big right hand landed that time. Busters, if, if, if two, three, or four is a good mic, they just tied him up and it made for lackluster fight. Kill Japan. This is for the undisputed heavyweight championship, and this is his night and all of that sort of stuff. But of course, one big shot from Mike Tyson can end all that speculation. And Mike looks like I. And now you get the idea that at some stage here, yeah, Mike can land a big shot. Big hand behind it. Let's see if we can get back to that. Oh, instead, Mike lands a pretty good right hand of his own inside. He's got it back together in the late portion here. Raising left hand that all night. Oh, that's a nice uppercut that time. The drop spot for Douglas. The count's up to two. And it's up to seven. And eight. And here it is at nine. Is he going to get up? Yes, he does. Cut from Mike Tyson that eventually catches him. And there it is. Look at that. It's a clean right uppercut. Different angle. Look at the head snap and the perspiration fly. And that's the Mike Tyson. Together between the eighth and ninth round. Look at that. What a vicious uppercut. Past the midway point in round nine. And I expect it. Look at this. Look at Bob. We got him again. Buster fights back strongly. Landing some big shots. And now he can't get careless. Look at that. Get back. Look at these. And these replays. You see Mike get one big shot in there. But Buster landed to a three. And look at this. Bangs the body. Back upstairs in the head. Buster doing just about everything right. Actually, his left Buster's landing these. Oh, nice uppercut by Buster Douglas. Look at this. He's knocked down for the first time in his career. Mike Tyson hits the canvas. He's in big trouble. He's not going to make it. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Buster Douglas is a new heavyweight champion of the world. Despite his shocking loss to Buster Douglas, Tyson's story was far from over from this point, as he regrouped coming back to reclaim heavyweight titles with the explosive power and unmatched aggression in his younger years. However, something had changed. The aura and invincibility that had defined his early career was now gone. Though he would go on to win more belts, including memorable victories against Razor Ruddock and Frank Bruno, Tyson just never quite recaptured that indestructible, ferocious dominance he once held over the division, as he ended up falling very much short against the likes of Evander Holyfield and Lennox Lewis, for example. But that era from the summer of 1986 to 1990 will always be remembered as a period when Mike Tyson, from the age of 21 to 23, was without doubt the baddest man on the planet. You can't help but feel if he maybe had better guidance outside the ring, things might have looked quite different. However, the legacy of Prime Tyson will continue to captivate fans throughout the ages. This has been Jamie from Boxing Life. I would love to hear your thoughts on Prime Mike Tyson. How do you think he would get on against today's modern heavyweights? If you want more like this, why not check out one of these two videos?
As always, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.